This video explains some odds and ends that you will need to know about before you take the PARC exams for grades 6 through 8 in the subject of mathematics this spring. The first thing that I will be discussing is using the equation editor when a question simply asks you for a math expression or equation. This frame is used to show whatever math steps are necessary to write and or solve an equation. As a result, you can only enter numbers and operations into this frame with the keyboard shortcuts that are available. For example, if you did 3 to the second power equals 9, you can write that. It can all be done on the keyboard. Some operations, however, are not available on the keyboard, so you need to enter them manually with the buttons that are provided. You can see 12 basic operations right there, and if you press the down button, it gives you more of them. An example of a problem that you can't enter strictly with the keyboard would be, say I'm doing a mixed number times a fraction, 5 and 1 eighth times my fraction, and I'll put in 6 fifths. As you're entering the numbers into your fractions or mixed numbers, you need to use the right and left arrow keys on the keyboard to move from one box or digit space to another. So if I redo this, I'm going to explain all the little steps that I took in between here. So first I did mixed number, and then I did 5, and then I pressed the right arrow button to get to my fraction, and then I did the 1 and then I hit the right arrow button again to do the 8. And then you can do time sign here or you can hold down shift and the number 8 to get the multiplication. And then I did another fraction and I put in 6 and then I pressed the right arrow button and then pressed 5. And once I'm done entering my fractions, if I want to put an equal sign at the end, I have to hit the right arrow button first and then press equals. If you are entering an expression or equation such as this without using the arrow keys, some errors can occur. So now I'm going to redo this again, but this time I'm going to forget those arrow buttons. So I do 5 and then 1 eighth. Oh wait, that, that shows up as 518. So I have to press the arrow button and if I put 1 eighth there, it shows up as 18 as the numerator. So I have to hit the arrow button to move over for that and again times and if I do fraction and then six fifths oh wait that's 65 so I'll delete the five press the right arrow button to move down and get to my five and then if I was to press say an extra operation after the five like a plus I because I didn't press the right arrow button the plus sign appeared in the denominator and that's not what I wanted so in order to get out of your fractions, make sure you press the right arrow button and then whatever operation or equation equal sign if that's what you're looking for. Now if you do make an error, you can also get out of that error by pressing the undo button. So that'll take me back to here. If I redo, I press that button. The keyboard shortcuts for these commands also work, so if you're one of those people that's a little more tech savvy and knows that Control Z or Command Z on a Mac actually gets rid of or undoes something, you could use those operations too. And then to redo, on a PC it would be Control Y, and on a Mac it's Shift Command Z, and it redoes it for you. So some keyboard shortcuts they also work. The second thing that I will be discussing is how to change the equation from an operation that has already been inserted. So let's say we had 6 times and then in parentheses 3 plus 4. But you wanted to change this operation, this plus sign, into something else. There are a few ways that you can do that. You can highlight the plus sign by putting your cursor right after it and then highlighting it in front. And then you can either type in or choose, say, the minus sign instead, and it'll change it for you. Or again, you can highlight just that sign and change it to division. Or you can press that and hold that sign. 
and choose multiplication. You can either press the multiplication button or you can hold down shift and then the number 8. The third thing that I will be discussing is the open response equation editor. And you use these problems to answer more open-ended questions where you're explaining it in both words and in math symbols. Notice over to the right the automatic drop-down menu of math symbols appears which generally looks about the same as what we were using with the basic equation editor. Other items that were there in the previous equation editor that are also here are different relations. Okay, there are some additional relations that you can use and if you hover over them you can see what they mean. So the squiggly equals sign is approximately equal to if it has a slash through it it means it's not. The equal sign with the tilde or squiggle over it means congruent and so on. The last set of menu options at the bottom are for geometry information. So the park is equipped with naming segments, rays, lines, angles, etc. using different geometric notations. If you are a caps lock person for repetitive capitalization such as naming segments, rays, lines, etc. then you would need to turn the caps lock on before you press the segment, ray, line, or angle button. If you're okay with holding down the shift key after pressing one of these options you could do that too to name your segments, rays, and lines. And what I'm talking about is this. If I first, let's just say I'm naming a segment, and I'm going to name it segment RS, and you have to use capital letters to name them. If I press line segment first, and then I press the caps lock button, and then RS, it doesn't appear right. So I would have to delete the whole thing and start over, have the caps lock on first, and then do line segment, and then RS. And then if I want to add a word after it, like is, I need to make sure that I press the space bar to get out of that notation so then I can type in text afterwards. So once you're done naming a segment, ray, line, or angle, or even a circle, you need to make sure that you press the space bar so that you get back into regular text. You can also use it to name angles and similarly like I said if you are a caps lock person for repetitive capital letters like I am you need to press the caps lock button first and then press either measurement of angle or naming an angle and then type in your letters ABC and then if I press space then I am out of the math notation is and then I could finish the sentence. So that's generally how you would name segments, rays, lines, and angles, etc. However, when you are trying to use these features after a given transformation, such as rotations, reflections, translations, etc., the different forms of notation will not always work correctly. For example, the new line segment usually uses the same letters but with apostrophes afterwards. So usually, there'll be a segment bar with these letters and we'll have A prime B prime. Usually there's a segment bar on top. But I wanted to explain how how it's written and what it means first. If I want to actually name a line segment with those letters, if I go to segment and then A prime B prime, the apostrophe or prime notation default commands which is associated with the computer language used when this text frame or program was created make it look just like it appeared, which is wrong. So therefore, when you are explaining a transformation, you need to use words instead. So in order to name this segment A prime B prime, I should actually type in the word segment A prime B prime is, and then finish my sentence. A suggestion would be to practice using the equation editor on your own so then that way you get more familiar with it. And Pearson has a link on their homepage that you can use to, to access it. So if you're at their main webpage, park.pearson.com, you can click on the test preparation tab and select sample items. And then if you scroll down and you look at 6 through 8, you can practice with the equation editor and it logs you in and you can start the test or practicing now.
and it gives you information on what you're provided with. It goes over what the basic equation editor is and what the open response editor is and what it allows. And then if you click the next button, this is the basic one that I was using before with all the different commands underneath. And if you go to the window 3 of 3, this is the open response equation editor. Another option would be to actually take the PARC practice tests that are available online. And to get there, you would go to the PARC website, park.pearson.com, and then click on test preparation and press practice tests. And you can go to either English language arts literacy practice tests or you can do the math practice test and then scroll down to your appropriate grade level either grade 6 and they have computer based practice tests this is going to be the first one um, performance based and then EOY means end of year that one's the later one and then they have the same options for grade 7 and also grade 8 and if you're one of those that's in 8th grade taking Algebra 1 they also have it available for Algebra 1 as well after you're done taking the practice test, you can actually look at the answer keys as well by clicking the link at the top. And from there, it goes through all of them. So this is the online performance-based component practice test that I just showed you. And you can click on whichever grade level is appropriate for you. The final topic that I will be discussing for the PARC exams in grades 6 through 8 is solving word problems. As you solve them, you might need to use your scrap paper to draw and label pictures. That is its purpose in the testing room. In this frame, you can put in math symbols, you can put in equations, but you cannot draw a picture. So if you need to draw a picture to solve a word problem, do it on your scrap paper. Show your work there and then take your work and put it into this text frame and explain exactly what you did for your grader so that they can give you as much credit as possible. So use the resources that you have available to you. And these are the odds and ends that you should know about prior to taking the park exams for grades 6 through 8 within the next few months. I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope that you have a great day.